had actually sent aircraft and ground troops and helicopters and all of that there. We have the means to do it, but we didn't. We have the means to provide health care and free college for every man and woman in America, but we didn't. We bought planes and jets to fight a war that never happened instead. I stand as part of the people, as with all my volunteers, as with all the friends who I volunteered with, that although our government did not want to do anything, we did something. We did something. We fought. And some of us died. Died. On behalf of fighting the Islamic State. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Kevin, but just one question. There were American Marines in Syria, right? There were and they are now there. They didn't do anything. They were providing artillery support for our for our assault. The special forces were providing support for our assault. I was on a rooftop with a 16 year old child soldier looking to assault the next building over where ISIS was. Absolutely. And we're sitting on the rooftop at three in the morning, standing guard, when the most horrible sound of my entire life rang through the night and broke through the silence. It sounded like the devil was strumming on the guitar strings of life. It was called High Mars. Incredible. Multiple 155 rocket were smacking the hell out of ISIS and killing all of them. It made me almost feel bad for them. Almost. I wish today that we had been a part of the after assault where I could have seen what that damage had truly done. Because that knowing, that terror, that violence, that explosion was something that I had never seen in all of my time in the U.S. military. I love the U.S. military. I love all of us. I love everything that we sacrifice. We're the largest voluntary force in the entire world. But what do we volunteer for? We don't know. No one really talks about what we try to fight against. They say now that ISIS, now at 2018, is at the same strength as in 2014. 30 to 40,000 fighters. How did that happen? I was there when we killed them all. We destroyed all their cities. We destroyed everything they had families, their children. I was there. I watched. I watched as Mark 82s and 30 millimeter A-10s destroyed everything that they had. So how could they be there now? How could they be there today? They're there because for every terrorist we kill, we create five new ones. For every war that we fight, create two more wars. For every time that we strike against an enemy, we create five more enemies. And we don't seem to realize this as a people. You can try to fight a war as much as you can from the sky and with drones and with planes and with all your might as Americans. Yet, to truly win a war, you need to walk in to an enemy's house and kill him. And we refuse to do that. It's not something we do as Americans nowadays. We're 
ashamed of it. We're quick to get into wars. We're quick to fight people's battles. But we're not quick to win. And I wish we were. It took me years, painful years to realize this. And I wish, I wish the governments and the generals and the soldiers and the sergeants and everyone else could see this. army we have now, the Marine Corps we have now, the Air Force, the Navy that we have now is one of ununderstanding. They don't get it. They've been ordered into war by certain people who've never killed another human being. Never understood the ramifications of that. Never understood the being of that. Yet you ask other human beings to do that. If you want to win wars, if you want to win battles, if you want to change policy, if you want to truly become the superpower that you claim to be, you have to march into somebody's house and kill them. And it's a dirty business. It's not something you can do with drones. It's not something you can do with A-10s, with F-22s, with F-35s, Mark 82s, Mark 85s, with GBU 11s, with anything. You actually have to kill people. In the face, shoot them in the face. And it's something you're not willing to do. I wish it was. Because there are certain battles around the world that need to be won. ISIS, whether we created them or not, should be extinguished. They are a step back in humanity 2,500 years. But we don't need to be. Where women are property, to where criminals are trash, to where anything that they don't agree with is death, to where all children need to be taught the Quran, and that's it. No other education. Every town that I liberated, every town that any volunteer liberated, the greatest gift that we gave them was the liberation of women the liberation of children to do however they wanted to. If we truly want to win that battle, we have to win that battle over there and over here. I believe to this day, as I did now, that we can win that battle. We cannot win it with jets, with drones, with special forces, we have to win it with love, with compassion, and with killing, all within the same sphere of influence. And if you can't, if we can't, we cannot win these battles, and we shouldn't get into them in the first place. The Islamic State is something that we created, the West. Pressure and tormented the Middle East into this. We left them no other option. And now that they have this option, now that they're killing themselves, now that they're fighting at a rate that we couldn't imagine, we act like we don't understand. We did this to them. We absolutely, absolutely pushed them into this. All the generals of all ranks, of all measures, of all types push them into this and then are shocked that they're doing suicide bombing to beat us. Yet we praise our own soldiers who commit suicide tactics to beat them. I hope sincerely, I hope sincerely someday we can find a peace between all of us. I think Rojava perhaps is the middle ground. I perhaps think that with Rojava we can shine a shining example, a shining light of what you can do when you admit
peace and equality to all, the men, women, children, and people of different religions. I think Rujava can be that shining example, and is now. Yet, if we abandon it, if we abandon it to Bashar al-Assad, it would be just another footnote in history of nothing. I think that if we fight for it now, if we abandon all the bullshit that we've been putting into Syria and focus so hard on what the people of Rojava have been fighting for now, and stick with it, we can change the entire Middle East into a peaceful, loving region that we can all support and give us exactly what they need. Resources, energy, Love, compassion, guidance. I believe in that. I believed in that now, and I believe in that.